Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel, and these are the letters of Messiah Yahushua. This is the last chapter of Mark. I think we should get a drum roll for that. So we are halfway through the gospel series now. We are have two more chapters, two more books left. Excuse me, and it's been a very good time with you guys. A very interesting time. We get like a really good beginning and get sad towards the end. But that's the process of this, right? We get to see how our Messiah was crucified for our sins, how what he went through, so that he could save us. What well, one person that didn't even know us, that knew in the future that these people need to be saved, he was willing to sacrifice himself because he saw the greater good of the people. He saw that the people could be saved, that there was salvation for them. So he was willing to sacrifice him. And us going over this, we are going to try and read to you guys and prove to the people that the Torah is forever, that we should not take what he has given us and take it and throw it back in his face. His death should mean absolutely everything to us, and we should repay that back by following the commands. And the reason he died was because the commands were broken, so we should show him that we accept his offering and follow his commands. Yeah. Jade, what commands should we be following? All of them. Every command that we are able to follow, everything but the Levitical command. Okay, and why wouldn't we keep the Levitical commands, Eli? Because we no longer have a high priest, and Yahushua is our high priest. That <laughs> dog just sounded like he said, hi. That was a dog. So my apologies to anybody that's never listened to this channel. Um, we are those people that believe that the, the, that the law, statutes, and commands are good for all generations, for all times, and that they will bless your life, they will enhance your life, they will keep you guys on the straight and narrow path, and they will help you get through that small gate, that small gate that is uh, hard for everybody to get through, it seems. And, um, yeah, so today is, uh, hold on, today is month eight on our creator's calendar. It is a preparation day for us. We'll go over that here in just a second. It is the 23rd day on our creator's calendar. It is a sixth day. Tomorrow is the seventh day, and that means it is a sh Sabbath. So today being a preparation day, what does that mean, Eli? It means that we should prepare today so we don't have to work, we don't have to cook, we don't have to clean, we, don't, we just rest tomorrow. What else do we do on preparation day? Well, we get everything ready, right? We're going to get our hearts ready. We're going to get our minds ready. We are going to basically shift from our rat race lives that we live, and we are going to shift into the calmness and the peace of y'all, right? We all work. Everyone stresses over work. Everyone has a certain thing they have to do. They all have work to do, and we are just going to forget all that. We are going to set our minds correct. We are going to basically clear up everything, and we're just going to spend time and separate this time with y'all. Yep. And so for those who um, have never seen this before, let me kind of introduce you just a little bit to our website here. Right here on our website, you can go and you can download the, the Hallelujah Scriptures for absolutely free. Um, it's the Free Restored Names Bible. If you go right here, the same one we're reading out of, but it will be the last one. Actually, you can go to the donate here. And if you guys can help us and donate, it's right here. And what you guys need to do to help and donate is to go find somebody that needs a big hug and give them a ginormous hug. And that is how you can donate to Boss Clan. So this is a PDF right here that has the entire scriptures. And then what we are doing is Nicole, not where we are, I'm not taking any kind of credit for this. Nicole, is, Nicole and another gal are doing the, uh, basically the proofreading and the translation of this. And so right now we have Bear Sheath, which is Genesis 1 through 6. And it has the restored names of our creator in that, which there's no place online that has the ancient Hebrew um, that has the correct looking. Everything else has um, normal Hebrew stuff, which is not the ancient Hebrew. So if we're looking at what our creator's name was, it was named in this. And we're going to stop actually reading out of what they call the Hallelujah Scriptures because that is a criminal organization and nobody should be buying from them. Nobody should be supporting them. Nobody should be doing anything with them. They've been running a 12-year grift and so people need to stay far, far, far away from them. They abuse the people that work for them and they abuse the children of our Most High and they do donations on the back of people. And they got a bunch of videos yesterday censored on YouTube again and so they shut down the video that exposed their names uh, shut down the video that exposed the house they stole and sh and they got rid of the videos where they stole the gold and the silver. So all of that is still available on all the other platforms. Uh, my channel over on 153news.net. You can find all of that and hopefully forever more. It has all of the expose. There's tons of people that are going there to take a look at that. You can also find us on BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, and pretty much everywhere else. And so as we study and as we keep the Torah... We need to be very aware that we are under the Torah. We are under the law. And part of that, one of them, is to, to master sin. And so if we are mastering, if you are attempting to master sin, in fact, that is the seventh commandment that we've found in the scriptures in that order. And if you are 
bamboozling the children of the Most High, if you are stealing from them, if you are doing donation grifts, if you are doing things in the name of our Creator, number one, you're breaking that commandment. You are not mastering sin. And so we have to be very, very careful, and we need to remind people every single day um, for the rest of my life that the Hallelujah Scriptures is a criminal organization, and they need to be stopped. And I don't know if they will be stopped, because we live in uh, Satan's world right now. And as we start reading uh, further in, we're getting rid of the Hallelujah Scriptures. We're going to put everything onto our website with the proper translations. We'll be reading off the website, and we will be um, using the correct, proper names of everything. All right, guys, this is the last chapter in the book. Are you guys ready? Yep. Yeah, this is kind of, we're kind of past the depressing part here. We're kind of more into a kind of like a new feeling of this, of the, of the, uh, gospel series right like towards the end of the book things are changed Yahushua is with them but he's not quite exactly the same as he was like he wasn't like in there with them as he was yeah all right guys and so those who've been with us for this whole time um extended family table out to you guys we love you guys as a family we we can't thank you guys enough for those in the telegram group we also have a telegram group um, it's kind of a spunky little group, and um, it's awesome group. There's some tremendous people in there. They have huge hearts, and these guys are all Yaz warriors. And so, um, if you're looking for a place that you're looking for a place that is um, a good place to hang out, the Telegram group is there. It's open for everybody, um, and it's it's just Yaz people that are hanging hanging out. Okay, Mark 16, and when the Shabbat was passed, Miriam from Magdala and Miriam of Jacob and Shaloma bought spices to go and anoint him okay so yep. we're after the shabbat right which means that shabbat was still in effect they were still keeping shabbat they didn't they either they missed the memo or the christians missed the memo right and so messiah yahushua just died which means he made shabbat on a sunday right yeah, you would think so right you would think so or maybe that's not true maybe he actually died for the repentance of sins and not to abolish the law that was the good yeah and so we have the mother of uh, our messiah and um we, they are going after a shabbat to buy something now why would they go after a shabbat to buy something eli because we're not allowed to buy or sell in the shabbat oh so they are keeping the laws of our our creator even though they're the messiah just died which it, to the christians would mean that now pig has become cling we can worship any day that we want, and we can basically live like we want to live. I, I guess my question for the Christians is, is when did the Torah actually be abolished? When was it abolished? Was it abolished in 300 AD, or was it abolished after he died on the cross? Where was it? Because obviously it's not abolished here because we see all the way up into Acts and all the way up into Paul's letters. He was still keeping the Torah. The Torah was still being kept. So when did the Torah actually get abolished? Now, let me defend the Christians right here, and let me tell you, when, when Jesus was on the cross, he said, it is finished. That means the Torah is gone. What he meant was uh, the sin is finished, that the uh, the death penalty is finished, that the sacrificing is finished. He is now the sacrificed lamb. The, there is no need for a mediator of a priest between you and Yah. Now it's Yahushua and the Holy Spirit as a mediator between you and Yah. Right. Yeah, and, and what he's saying when it's finished is it means the, that his, his fulfillment of walking the Torah in a perfect fashion, that he had done what he was sent to do, and he did it in a perfect fashion, and it was by his blood and stripes right. we are healed. So if you read the rest of that verse, it says, and by this he knows that, that the words of the prophets have been fulfilled, and he said it is finished. Finished means complete, fulfilled, brought to an extent of like finishing. Right, yeah. Okay, so let's continue on. Thank you, guys. And very early in, in very early morning, on one of the Shabbat, they came to the tomb, when the sun had risen. Okay, now this is going to be confusing people. It just says we were done with the Shabbat. Now, why did it just say in on, very early in the morning on one of the Shabbat? Well, mine here says the first day of the week. So Shabbat means one of the days of the week, or it could be after a high Shabbat. Right, and so we're dealing with what, Nicole? Well, I have something different. Okay, about. what do you got? So this debunks the people thinking that it's sunset or sunrise to sunrise. Right. Because they went and purchased the... The, the good smelling stuff after Shabbat, but it, then it says they arrived there early in the morning and the sun had risen. If it was sunrise to sunrise, they wouldn't have been able to go buy those herbs. Right. If it's sunrise to sunrise, yeah, they, it'd still be a Shabbat. Yeah, right. And you, they would not have done that. But where it says right here, um, they came on on one of the Shabbat. We're talking about a high Shabbat. This was right after Passover, so the day the day after this is is a is a high Shabbat. So we end up with two. Shabbats like right, either right next to each other or very close to each other well, every year. Well, if we year. look at it from like a Wednesday to Shabbat standpoint, it is very possible. 
right? Because we have that's over on Wednesday. Right. You have three days, and then Shabbat hits, right? Right. Something like that. Right, and but they we also have a high Shabbat as well. Is the point that I'm trying to make? Yeah, on that's, this. that's a, like because one day we have a high Shabbat and they can't go out, and then after right. that, right, they have that. Right. So hopefully, you guys, hopefully that made sense to you guys. Three. And when they said among themselves, "Who shall roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb for us?" And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was extremely large. And having entered into the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right, wearing a white robe, and they were greatly alarmed. And he said to them, do not, be, do not be much alarmed. You seek Yahushua of Nazareth, who was impaled. He is raised. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. And go, say to his Talmudian in Kepha, that he is going before you into Galil. You shall see him there, as he said to you. So I thought that was interesting, right? They, they specifically said Kepha, right? Specifically, Kepha. Kepha's, Kepha was the guy that uh, he keeps getting in trouble, right? Kepha, keep, keep gets a, in trouble. He's a violent dude. He, he's, he's a violent dude. Plus, I mean, he... Um, he had, had a little bit of a stumbling block with his faith. He had a stumbling block with his faith. He sunk a little bit in the water when he was walking out to Messiah Yahushua, right? Um, but still, he seems to be the closest to Yahushua. Yeah, absolutely the closest to Yahushua. He even had Messiah Yahushua tell him to get behind him, Satan. And he's, so he got called Satan. By Messiah Yahushua, so. But it seemed that he was like the most cared about of all the disciples. Like he was like the closest to Yahushua. He's the man. Maybe him or James. Either he or James. I know John's pretty close too. I mean, I mean, John. James is his brother. Yeah. Well, they were. Uh, they were. They were all close. Those three, and they went out and fled from the tomb, and were trembling and bewildered, and they spoke to no one, for they were afraid. And having risen in in the morning on one of the Shabbat, he appeared first to Miriam from Magdala. Magdala from whom he had cast out seven demons. So it doesn't talk about that in, throughout the books, but he did cast seven, seven uh, demons from Mary Magdala. Right. Okay, so I'm, I'm just a little lost, folks. We're on 10? Um, well, it's kind of like that. Is there a way to lock it? To hold um, scrolls? This is... Um, th we have better ways. And the next thing we're going to be reading is from the website. So this won't go like we're doing it. This will actually look really super good. And so hopefully I can get your mother to get us uh, Luke... At least the first thing, so we can read this from the website, Luke. And I'm also looking for uh, Genesis so we have it for Shabbat, because I'm tired of reading out of the criminal organization's scriptures. Okay, 10. She went and reported to those who had been with him, mourning and weeping. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. And after this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into a field. I got to say this in another, like... Another big failure by these guys getting their big F for not believing that he was risen. He said he was going to be risen in the third day. They've seen so much stuff, and then she comes like, like trembling in, saying he's alive, and they're just like laughing it off, like no, that didn't happen. Like they just, they just, they kind of are like the Israelites, where they've seen so much and yet they can still fail so easily. Is it possible Yah was hardening their hearts to make this some kind of example? Let's go. Let's go. How many people did Yahushua raise from the dead? We got Lazarus. We got the little girl of the um, the soldier dude. Yeah. Um, who else? I think there was two girls. There was a Shomerite woman who's like was almost on death's door. We had wasn't it Peter's mother who was sick? Yeah, yeah she was he, really sick. She, she was really sick, and then he fixed her. Um, There's the all the blind people. All the blind people that were able to be seen again. The deaf, the, the lame who could not walk, the, the guy, guy that they from the roof. yeah drive dropped from the roof. Because they were there throughout all of these things, and people were the, the ten lepers. Yeah, the ten the ten lepers. Um, and who, what, only two of them came back? I mean, one, the fish, one, when, they, when, he first, one did. when he first met them, he had like, they all had a billion fish when they were done. Yeah, and they, they carried away uh, five baskets one time, I think seven the other time, um, or 12, I can't remember, it was, it was a, a tremendous it amount. Was 12 and 7. Peter himself got money from a fish's mouth. Yeah, from a fish's mouth. Taxes. They, um, I mean, literally, they were able to walk, they all saw Kepha walk on water and sink as well and get freaked out. He put the, uh, Priest, the high priest, ear back on after he cut it right off in the midst of the battle. He stopped wind and rain on a boat. He actually stopped physical nature. I mean, this is like, this is just like, how can you, you've seen so many things that are like supernatural that how are you willing to just say, nah, he's not back? Yeah, this is, cra this is crazy, but I mean, this is, um, this is I mean, we, the scriptures. I mean, if they read scriptures, they would know that even the uh, Eliyahu, when they, like, when they threw the bones in, he came back to life. All these guys came back to life from the grave. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, you, you never know where these guys' hearts are or where their minds are when you see this. Okay. And after this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into a field. And they went and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. 
Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he reproached their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he was raised. Okay, so he, they all got scolded. He's right? like, I'm back, and you did not believe what's going on, guys? Come yeah. on. And he said to them, go into, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to every creature. Okay, this is the Besorah right here. This is a, I think this is a commandment. I mean, this needs to go, this needs to be a commandment. Um, we don't have this before, but now we do, that we need to go into the world and proclaim the good news to every creature. So, Nicole, this would be a, um, Mark 16, 15 would be a commandment. And um, I think I need you guys to read Mark again on Shabbat and see if you guys can find any other commandments. Because I, I think we got we got uh, carried, away. carried away on this one. So I don't know if we got this right, but I do want to get this with all the commandments that we can find. Okay, so that's a commandment. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. He who has believed and has been immersed shall be saved, but he who has not believed shall be condemned. And these signs shall accompany the ones who believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with renewed tongues. They shall take up snakes. And if they drink anything deadly, it shall be by no means hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall get well. Then indeed, after the Adon had spoken to them, he received he was received up into the Shimaim and sat down at the right hand of Yahuwah. Okay, so let's let's talk about this right here. He tells us that we need to go into the whole world and to preach the good news to every creature. Does that mean we need to save our dogs? I don't know. Maybe the ant, maybe the anthill needs a little pasture. Maybe the anthill needs a little pasture. Maybe needs some. What does it mean? Every creature. Does your guys just say creature? <laughs> yeah, mine does. Right. Every creature. Okay, so every creature that is basically. I think he just means proclaim it to the world, right? Tell everyone you see. Right. So I mean, if if somebody was saying that uh, it's it's a black thing or a white thing or a yellow thing or something, we that some people can't be saved. You actually have these what they call black Hebrews, and they're very they're violent, aggressive guys that believe that their skin color has them with um, essentially they're saved because of their skin color and that nobody unless you're black is what it is. It says right here, good news to every creature. Proclaim the good news to every creature. That would mean black, white, red, yellow, green, purple, whatever color you are. And we see through Peter's vision as well that there's no discrimination. Everyone can be saved. There's they doesn't. There's no unclean and clean between humans anymore. Only if you are outside of the Torah. Yeah. So he says. Go. He going on. He says he who has believed and has been immersed shall be saved. Okay. So there is a a way. What is he saying here? He said that there is a there's a way to be saved. There is a way that you need to go preach the good news, and everyone that believes will be saved. What about the immersion? He said there's two things here. He who has believed and has been immersed shall be saved. But then it goes on. But he who has not believed shall be condemned. So first of all, believe and immersed, and then if you don't believe, you're condemned. Well, we can see his immersion of the Ruach, right? When the Ruach would come over people, and the, like, basically like the baptism by fire, where the Ruach would come onto people, and they would have the faith, and they would be able to perform miracles like talking in tongues. We saw it with the apostles and things like that. When they all received the Ruach, who yeah. HaKadosh at that moment, that could be the form of immersion, because I don't know if immersion itself is actually a way into salvation. It's like a, <clears throat> almost a ritual for belief, but yeah. but not a, I don't think it's like a mandatory thing. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a salvation thing because there will be a lot of people that will not be able to be immersed, and there will be the thing is that you don't want some five hundred one c three preacher dunking you in the in his pool, doing it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost as they think it's a Trinity, and then you're you that is that is not what this is about. So as far as finding that one guy or the guy to baptize you, it would it, some people may never ever have the opportunity to ever have that happen, and so. Um, I do not believe this is going to be a salvation thing, but if you can be baptized, if you can wash your life clean, that you are basically a, a ceremony, like Kate said, is a ceremony. Okay. Um, so what do, what do we make of this? Um, they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with renewed tongues. What does that mean, renewed tongues? Renewed well, that... tongues, like we're going to be able to speak in different ways that we didn't speak before. I, yeah, they, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I mean, the renewed tongues could also be... Um, when we are evil people, when we're part of the world system, we, we speak a different way. When we're part of the Babylonian systems, we, we swear, we see terrible things, we, we speak unholy like. And if you're speaking with renewed tongues, you're going to be speaking a cling version. You're not going to be speaking the same as, as hanging out with the boys in, in gym club or something of the sort. Um, it just won't be like that. It also says they shall take up snakes. And if they drink anything deadly, it shall by no means hurt them. Now, we've seen... 
I've seen, you guys have probably never seen it, but there are churches where they have actually have snakes in there and people end up dead all the time. Um, and they, they'll pass the deadly snake around and sometimes they get bit, sometimes they don't. But these preachers will sit there with that snake in the air and they're like, yeah, and they're, I mean, this is what the church that's like is. Tempting. Yeah, like, it, that's like really just like. It, it is. And they, they get bit and they do end up dead. Um, does this mean we should become snake charmers or handlers? Of course, was like uh, have the flutes and like do tricks. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he's saying that uh, we will take up like the serpents of the earth, right? We're supposed to be like smartest serpents, right? We're supposed to be able to fight off the serpents of the world. I don't think we're supposed to like get go fight them and say, oh, I wonder if it's biting. I wonder if I'm saved. Or, like, let's, let's test my faith. Am I saved or not? And then get bit by a freaking snake. Yeah, and I mean, it, it says, and if they drink anything deadly, it shall by no means hurt them. They literally will put. Uh, cobra venom in a, in a cup and drink the stuff and, and people die. That's not good. That's yeah, well, really bad. That's there. I mean, I guess that's a part of faith, but I mean, we got to have the rest, the rest of it, right? It's got to be some probably common sense stuff. If we're sitting there, you know, and we jump into a pit of snakes and we're like, ah, we're not going to get hurt. Um, and it's having faith. You told remember the command, "Don't tempt your whoa, there you go. Yeah, and it's like when you. It's like when Satan told him to jump off the building and see if the angels come down and save him. Yeah, and just because we can do it doesn't mean it's a good idea. And I mean, there there would be a reason for everything. It's like okay. where I think where like the good example of like things where serpents won't hurt you is where Paul was picking up all the sticks to start the fire and then the snake bit him. Yeah. Like, oh, he's dead. He he's gonna die. And he, like, just he, nothing happened to him. Right, just a little flesh wound. Yeah, they thought he was the man. After that, they were like, this guy's gonna swell up and die. He's gonna be looking like bad news here shortly and he didn't and, and so. yeah i think that's i think that's a good example of it. i don't think it's like something you should go off and uh be testing grab the snakes yeah okay well we had one of those the other day we had a venomous deadly cobra we didn't exactly grab we kind of cut him up so. yeah we cut him a little bit but he was still sitting there hissing trying as we were cutting him up so wild wild beast okay 19 then indeed after the add-on had spoken to him he was received up into the shimaim and sat down at the right hand of yahuwah and they went out and proclaimed it everywhere while the add-on worked with them and confirmed the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Okay, so here's something weird. This is one of these Trinity busters, right? He was received up into the Shimaim and sat down at the right hand of Yahuwah. Wait a second. He multiplied he, himself and sat next to him. I thought he was Yahuwah. I thought he was Yahuwah. Did he just, he just went, whoop, and he like a, like a, what do they call those, uh, the gremlins where you put a little water on it and they split? Oh, yeah. Um, is it like this? You know, this is, if we ha believe in the Trinity, then we absolutely have to think that things like this sound a little nuts. How would you sit down at the right hand of Yahuwah if you are Yahuwah? None of this makes any sense. The Trinity does not make any sense. We got to get our deities right. We got to serve Yahuwah. It's only him. Shema Yashrael. Yahuwah is one. And his son came and said he is the son. He never, ever said he was Yahuwah. It doesn't matter if you have one verse that says I am when he's actually answering a question and he says I am. Um, you've made entire doctrine and that is incorrect doctrine. So it is a preparation day. Guys, when the sun sets today, it is a holy time our creator has, has given to us. It is a time to rest your hearts, minds, and souls. It is a time to get in sync with him. Tomorrow, we will be live, hopefully, unless Hallelujah Scriptures gets this channel banned. And then if we're not live, we will go to the other platforms. Guys, please take note in all the descriptions of the various different places you can find us online. Um, the demons and devils are definitely trying to take us out. And we will fight tooth and nail all the way to the bitter end to uh, free the people of Yah and to show them that they've been involved in a my major grift. And so, guys, um, that is it. Uh, that's Anyone have anything? Uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. Read yep. your Bibles. And thanks for tuning in. Yep. We'll see you guys tomorrow live at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I think. Um, we'll see it scheduled. We'll try to get it scheduled today so everyone can see it today. So thank you guys very, very much. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.